members of the jury, I submit the following words for immediate and violent execution and extraction from our vocabularies. To be locked away forever, if you would prefer. These words I present to you are good and bad. These words have served as treacherous liars for eternity. These two words have worked in tandem to produce vague, bland Yay. sentences that have crippled the creativity of humanity. These two deceptively tiny words stifle real description and honest communication. Look at them, just sitting there on this page, all smug and satisfied with their work. How dare they? You serve no purpose in our world, and we must rid ourselves of your influence. We must replace these two words with the truth, with phrases that include adequate and sincere adjectives. I offer you radiant, stupefying, awful, gut-wrenching. These choices create clarity and depth. Good and bad only provide gray vagueness. We must demand color. We should even use winding similes and metaphors where appropriate. We have to do whatever we can and should to make our real sentiments known. Good and bad will no longer be our go-to words that we rely on when we are too afraid or too languid to express our real thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I implore you to deliver a verdict of guilty and send these words to their rightful fate. Now, imagine a world without these two words. Imagine a world real description is required, digging further into our vocabulary than just a monosyllabic effort to get away with not being honest, impactful, creative. How does my hair look? Good. What is that? A dull attempt not to be honest? Perhaps my hair looks like a hideous mess of tangles and bald spots, yet someone does not want to be honest and offers the quick fix good to try and mask the truth and send me hurling into the evening with a plop of disorganized tresses. This will not do. Perhaps my hair looks like an amazing glossy sculpture that frames my face perfectly and lends an air of magic to the night. Well, good just doesn't cut it. I won't take any more of this formless, lifeless description. I will not take these lies, and neither should you. The doctor asks you how you feel. I feel bad. Heresy! The doctor, based on this paltry report, could conclude that you have brain cancer, or the flu, or rabies. You owe it to yourself and the possible misdiagnosis of your life to be honest about exactly how you feel. I feel like a herd of wombats have taken up in my chest. Aha! There we have it. An accurate description. Now the doctor has some real evidence to work with in order to assist you. We have become addicted to the numbness that good and bad have created. We have become linguistic slobs churning out good and bad wherever we are too lazy to allow our minds to communicate with creativity and specification. You look good. You sound bad. This tastes good. The weather looks bad. Lie after lie, repeating this verbal gray, this sloshy mush, this fuzzy picture that reflects no real truth. Replace them with grittier, exact terms that have been buried in our Lexus, waiting to see daylight. No longer does the weather look good or bad. The weather looks ominous or exhilarating. Nothing tastes good or bad. It tastes like pillows of sparkles or old shoe and dung. No more of sounding good or bad. You sound like lilting baby laughter or ogres marching to war. Dear God, you do not look good or bad. You look like a feathery angel or a morose clown. Today, you look at these two words, good and bad. Examine them closely, because behind their seemingly unassuming visages reside two deceitful offerings that smother the truth. These words are liars. These words must be stopped. Remove them from our language so that honesty can return to our communication. Ladies and gentlemen, if I say to you that you have been a good jury, you will take the compliment, make your decision, and go on about your day. But if I say to you that you are an honorable jury, and that I hope your unshakable determination to better the vocabulary of humanity will result in finding good and bad guilty, you will recognize the ingenuity of this argument and find good and bad guilty.